Okay, hi, my name is Jamie, and this is a quick introduction to ray casting using the lightweight Java gaming library. Uh, the concept of ray casting works no matter what language you're using. Uh, the only reason I mentioned the lightweight Java gaming library is for the source code that goes with this video, because everything is written in Java and using that particular tool. In order to ray cast, it's a multi step process. Basically, when you click on a screen, your mouse is represented by the XY coordinates of the actual 2D plane that is your screen resolution. However, in your 3D world behind the scenes, the viewing plane is actually expanded outwards. So when you click, for instance, here, you need to know how that projects outwards in this direction. Likewise, if you were to click on the other side over here, it would expand out this way into your 3D world. And if you clicked dead center of your screen at the exact middle, you would find that it actually extends out in a perfectly straight line without any additional elevation. So this projection matrix directly correlates to the screen or OpenGL's projection matrix, and it needs to be calculated in order for you to know where did the user click on the screen and thus what are you actually going to have to test when you want to do a raycast? So the way you do this is using the uh, unproject OpenGL routine. And you're actually going to do it twice. The first time is going to be with a depth of zero, which is going to tell you what the coordinate is on the closest plane, or basically right on the glass itself. And the second one is with a depth of one. And that'll tell you the furthest distance away. And once you have those, you basically have your two points that you can now figure out what your actual ray line is. The next step in doing ray casting is actually a little more tricky. We actually break down the process of testing for a collision with a ray cast into two steps. So for this, let us just assume, uh, and I'll do it like this. Let us assume that we have a triangle right now. In our three-dimensional world. This, tri this triangle is floating in three-dimensional space. And we've clicked on the screen. And our ray calculates like this. The first step is to actually treat the triangle as if it was a two-dimensional object. And we do that by picking the face of the triangle and basically treating the entire face as if it was a plane, meaning that it extends in both directions infinitely. We also treat our ray as if it's a plane, assuming it extends infinitely. Now, if our ray happens to be parallel then the two will never meet. But any angle other than being perfectly parallel to the plane will intersect either in the forward direction of the ray, or if it happened to be that we were casting in this direction, in the backwards direction of the plane. So the first step is we figure out whether or not the two lines ever, or the two planes, ever intersect. If they intersect, you can actually tell if it's in the forward direction or in the reverse direction based on whether or not the value is positive or negative. If this works out to zero, they're parallel, you may as well stop calculating right then and there because you're eventually going to get a divide by zero error and there's no point, the two never intersect. Once you've figured out where the intersection point is, then you move on to a second test. And the second test is a little more interesting. What you're basically going to do is figure out whether or not the intersection point falls within the boundaries of the triangle. To do that, you first use the three points of the triangle to calculate the area of the triangle overall. Next, you take your intersection point and you treat it as if it was a point within the triangle also. And then the trick from there is you basically subdivide the triangle, adding this point into it. There 
Uh, lovely. Huh, just like last time I did this video, it's locked up again. <laughs> Come on, catch up. There we go. All right, so you're going to subdivide the triangle. which basically gives you three triangles. Now, if the area of this triangle plus this triangle plus this triangle equals the area of the outer triangle, therefore this middle point must be inside it. But if your intersection point happens to fall outside the triangle, then what's going to end up happening is your new divided triangles which are going to be this triangle, this triangle, and this triangle, will have a greater area than the triangle that you're trying to test against, in which case it must be outside the triangle. Between those three steps, unprojecting, plane intersection, and then area testing, you can actually tell whether or not the line that you've casted as a, as a ray is actually falling within the boundaries of a given triangle. And since all of your models are made up of triangles, you can actually get right down to testing individual faces of your model. That's probably overkill in most cases. You probably want to have a concept of a bounding box and test against a much simpler shape. But using this technique, you could actually do pixel perfect ray cast testing right down to every single face of your model. And that's it. So the code that I'm posting up with this uh, to Pastebin, one is the unprojection utility, and the other one is the ray casting utility. Now there's one thing to note with the ray casting utility, and this is a bit of a gotcha. Because you're using square root in some of the mathematics for doing the areas of a triangle, you will end up with rounding errors, which means instead of adding up all of the three subsection triangles and testing it against the main triangle, it's actually better to subtract them from one another and then test whether or not you're within the range of 0, 0.0 to the five decimal places one. And that will account for any minor rounding concurrency issues that you can run into. Um, basically you're saying I'm close enough to being equal, therefore I'm gonna treat it as if it's inside. And that's it. Uh, the code that I'm posting up is heavily documented. Uh, it is not optimized. I only just got this working recently. Um, I can show a really quick demo of this just so you can see it in action. And then we'll call this video it because I'm trying to keep the cap on this video pretty small. So let's start it up. Raycasting test. So when looking at the source, you're going to see that I have lots of text components that's represented here on the screen. These are outputs. And in this video, the three red cubes represents the three points of the triangle. I can move my mouse and in real time it's doing the calculation. And if I move the mouse inside the triangle, it's calculated that I've actually hit at that exact point. It draws a yellow dot. And if I actually zoom in, you can see there is the ray itself. Now because when the ray is cast, it's we're looking directly down it, you don't typically see it unless you actually move the camera angle. So while within the triangle, we are hitting, and as soon as I move out of the triangle, notice it says miss over here. You do see the line, but you no longer have the yellow square. And this is real-time ray casting, testing for where we collide. Now this works even if you shift the camera, so I can shift the triangle over this way. Notice we're still hitting. I can even do a rotation and we can test and show that it's hitting right there, going right through even though the triangle is now very, very thin. And we can even go side to side and you can see it hits and then misses and then hits and misses. So now the area that I can actually hit is much, much smaller because of the angle of view. And there's the angle that we were hitting the triangle through. So this code that I'm showing here running is the actual code I'm posting up to Pastebin. Please feel free to analyze it, use it, give credit, and that's it. If you have any questions, please leave comments. Thanks.